flesh and blood, error prone members of the Hominidae tribe of the subfamily Hominidae of the family Hominidae. Because when you're here, you're family every day, especially if you're of the info order Siminiforms, suborder Hoplorhini, in the order of primates. Yes, monkeys are your cousins, whether your drunk uncle patriot disagrees on truth social. Nature doesn't give a shit if he types in all caps. Have some class. And yours is Mammalia in the phylum Chordata in the Animalia Kingdom population eukaryota. And that means you, me, and all nuclei having VIPs on the list. Don't need to show your ID. Just walk in, King. You own the place. You say there's something. The bid still stands. You say there's something tugging at your mind strings, playing footsie with your thinking parts, tippity tapping your attention and stinking in your instincts like a popcorn kernel, caught in the collective gum line of your mind? You say you got a feeling like you ate a banana wasn't ripe yet, now you can't tell if you're poisoned or disappointed? You say there's something on the wind, on the air, on the breeze, not quite right, not quite fine, weird, creepy, kooky, mysterious, and ooky? Well, don't you fret, fume, fuss, fear, agitate, or aggravate, because I got just what you need, what you're craving, what you're hungry for, and what'll trap all your thirst, and it's yours, 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 for the low, low price of just giving a shit. And you didn't have to go far to find it, because it's all around you. Yeah, the magic was inside us all the time. Fuck yeah, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. And he doesn't travel with a sack, he pulls presents out of facts. And ho, 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 don't you know, he's known all around the globe by the holly jolly sobriquet every day that we call Science! Ah, science! The buzz in the bees, the rustle in the trees, the buckle in your knees when you realize all your worries can be quantified, designated, labeled, and cataloged, so you don't gotta. You just check the spreadsheet. Oh, shit! There it is! You're not alone in the void! Even the void has a cubicle in the office of science, and there's always great <laughs> treats at the parties. Stop bringing donuts, Carol! Fuck's sake, get a vegetable tray or some hummus. Your colon works here too. Doesn't matter what day or time, science is always on your side even when you don't realize you need it. Like right now, currently in the moment we're in, we're chit-chatting and shooting shits here. The last full week of January in the year of our anxiety, 2024. <laughs> Four days until we bid goodbye to the first month of the year, collectively waking up and realize we got to get our shit together because February is coming. And if you're in the Midwest, that's when the cold starts breaking people. <laughs> for me, it's March. The air hits me sideways on my way to the train just a little too hard for the last fucking time. <laughs> and I got to cry about it. And before you ask, no, I don't fly south for the winter. Fuck has those kind of miles these days. I'm also not going on any human flying contraption until you fix the fucking doors. <laughs> They're not a shed in the backyard. These things are in the sky. <laughs> it is natural at this point to feel a sense of incoming peril, approaching catastrophe, and good old fashioned doom. And the news ain't helping, no siree. There's more to worry about than a hydrated hippo on a frozen lake wearing a lead vest and cement crocs and the only bathrooms on the shore. <laughs> and then we got April coming. Now, why should we be worrying about April? We shouldn't, have you been listening? That's just your amygdala talking. And sure, it's got you this far, but I'm here to tell you. You got a safety harness, a life vest, a lunchbox with its own thermos, taste sandwich, a crunch, snacks, and a pudding cup that the ancients have packed for you just before you left for the bus. And it's got a name sharpened on the masking tape on its face, and that name is science! I'm sure you've heard the buzz, because it's hard as hell to miss it. It's louder than a Karen caught wind, the new neighbors from Mexico. Scientists are all at Twitter, except it's called X now, but only by Elon Musk. The cicadas are coming! <laughs> like time, age, and seasonal Oreos, the annual cycle of the periodical cicada is inevitable. From the superfamily Cicadoidea of the order Heptera. Don't make that face. If you can follow fucking Full Metal Alchemist, you can follow this. <laughs> And they are literally just here to party fucking die. Like the fire fest, except it works, so they're gonna do it again. <laughs> the name Cicada is a Latin automatopoeia. I mean, it sounds like it sounds. The sound is not hard to imagine, because they sound like many lawnmowers, and they have sounded like that since back when people spoke Latin, so you know the old ways die hard sometimes. 
The Magic Cicada is the one auditioning for Bugs Got Talent at top volume around April, May. <laughs> also known as the Periodical Cicada. And they're called that because you know they come around every once in a while. Exclusively in North America, the Periodical Cicada come around every 13 and 17 years in tight squads called broods and they are labeled accordingly. There's also annual cicadas that pop up every year, but we're talking about the premier species, so respect. The way it works is like this. Male cicadas live for two to four weeks because they don't follow Amazon Prime rules. Fuck you, they'll get there when they get there. And in that time, they mate, and then the females of the species drop uh, hundreds of eggs in the branches of trees, which is really the only potentially harmful thing that they do because like, if a couple of branches aren't strong enough, they'll get snapped, unlike locusts that'll eat all your plants, bail and not pay. So let's stop calling cicadas a 17-year locust. That's disrespectful. Cicadas lay up to 600 eggs before dying, and then six to 10 weeks later, those baby torpedoes hatch, and the nymphs fall from the tree and burrow six to 18 inches underground, and that's where the party planning begins. <laughs> These six-legged bug moles live drinking from tree roots like a Jim Henson creation, or an underground indie band that's just working on their sound for 17 years. <laughs> and then, when the ground temperature gets around 64 degrees, they crawl out of their little hobbit holes, ready to drop the hottest album of the set to decade, they molt out of their old skin, and they harden into three penny-long black bodies, clear wings, and bold red eyes like hell's mosquitoes. <laughs> but that's really just to keep them hidden in the trees. Since they really don't have any natural defense, they gotta blend in better than a Scientologist at a Best Buy. The males <laughs> have themselves a fancy sound system made up of a white patch near their ass called a timbal organ alongside their wings, and then they pull on it, and it buckles the ribs, and since their back end is hollow, it resonates, making them the bards of the D&D world that is nature. <laughs> These little dorm room troubadours slam their timbals at around 90 to 100 decibels, which is as loud as a lawnmower at three feet. And like that neighborhood kid mowing for 20 bucks, that's the sound of summer. Cicadas <laughs> will hit it heavy and then take off quickly around mid-July with a lifespan of four to six weeks, only to start the spin cycle all over again. But how? How do they know? Why do they do it? Who taught them math? <laughs> no one, that's crazy. We owe most of the research about all this to land surveyor, mathematician, astronomer, and naturalist, Benjamin Benneker, born a free black man in the 1700s America, in the midst of surveying and establishing the borders of Washington, DC, which I mean, you need a hobby just to get some sleep. He spent 50 years documenting cicadas, quote, I then imagined they came to eat and destroy the fruit of the earth and then would occasion a famine in the land. I therefore began to kill and destroy them, but soon saw that my labor was in vain. And after studying and learning because science, he figured out they were just here for a good time, not a long time. Most notably noting, quote, if their lives are short, they are merry. They still continue singing till they die, end quote. And thanks to 50 years of being eroded to the Jack Black of Bugs, we now know that the periodical cicada emerges like clockwork, and they do it because they're delicious. The animals that want to snack on the Fritos of the insect world also <laughs> breed in cycles of their own. So when these long game cicadas were developing, some of them would go off script and come out on an even number of years. Around the same time, the munch happy predators were also spawning in big numbers. And so they got eight and they disappeared, leaving the ones that bred on the prime side, 13 to 17 years to survive and thrive. So now, thanks to nature, they just continue the tradition. And like the McRib, they are only available for a limited time. And this year, and this year, we're getting two broods for the price of one. That's the most hype brood ever got. 13-year brood X XIX, which is the largest of all periodical cicada broods, will co-emerge with a 17-year brood XII. It's like the Fast and the Furious gang showed up with the X-Men in a Marvel movie co-produced with Sony, so you know you're going to get all three Spider-Men and then somehow Darth Maul shows up. <laughs> because of the math we talked about a second ago, and if you don't remember, that is why you take notes! <laughs> A 13-year brood emerges the same year as a 17-year brood roughly every five to six years. A co-emergence involving adjacent broods different light cycles is something that happens only roughly every 25 years. Any two specific broods of different life cycles co-emerge only every 221 years. And in 2024, we're going to get 
A 13 and 15 year coming out on the town for the first time since 2015. A Jason 13 and 17 year broods emerging the same time since 1998. So like, don't spoil anything for them. They will be disoriented. The last movies they saw was something about Mary and saving Private Ryan. It's gonna be weird, <laughs> so be gentle. And for the first time since 1803, Brood XIX and XII will co-emerge, making this year louder than Bama Rush. So prepare thyself, it's gonna get fucking loud. But tis nothing to fear. It's just a periodical insect orgy. If anything, jump the fuck in. Get out to the karaoke bar, the country bacon cheeseburger joints, block parties, whatever and wherever you can tap a keg and belt Sweet Caroline and get fucked. If nature is telling you anything with a double brood of singing party fuck bugs for the first time in 221 years, you've earned it. But, 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 if you still gotta be in your butthole with worry, just know that even if this is happening, even in an election year of wars and genocide and a nightmare news cycle, the doomsday clock has not moved the needle for the second year in a row, which means you can breathe it out, sapiens. Yeah, it's right on the edge of 90 seconds to midnight, but fuck, you got another year, so live it up. And while that's all going down, spare a moment for the great Benjamin Benneker, without whose research we wouldn't know shit. And we'd be smashing every one of those soaring insect loots that just came to party and call it, singing until they die. We should all be so lucky. And lucky us, we can be! And it's all thanks to the Xanax for your panics, the Ativan for the land, the pack snack for your anxiety attack, natural flavored, sugar-free remedy, no GMOs, gluten-free, vegan, unprocessed, grass-fed, and available all year round that we call science! I love you. Good night. Chad the Bird!